if if they, if someone was to ask you, obviously what their earnings were it would be the 150, not the 147, right? If they're trying to think of what their compensation, but you can imagine, and in many situations you will have a case where box one is lower than possibly box three and possibly box five oftentimes. In that case, if someone asks you, how much did I actually earn? You don't really wanna be representing that with box one. And this gets kind of confusing because people often have issues when they're talking about how much they earn compared to how much possibly their spouse has earned and how much tax they should be paying versus how much their tax their spouse is paying because the tax rates are being kind of manipulated based on both of their income. That becomes an issue. And when they're working at their job, they, they need to know how much they're actually earning because they're going to do comparisons with other people that are earning whatever they're earning. And honestly, sometimes because of the complication with the way things are set up, people start to think, well, box one is my earnings. Even, and so they're not taking into consideration the fact that they're earning more than that because, because the, you're, you're getting compensation in the form of benefits, right? And they have, and the, the reason that you get the benefits is because you get a tax break on it. So it's actually, you're getting more compensation because of the benefits. So really kind of box five is more closer to your actual uh, wages. And, you, and it's good if there's a big difference between box five and box one, because that means you're taking substantial advantage of benefits, which are giving you those benefits plus a giant tax break on the benefits, right? So it's kind of, so it gets kind of messy Obviously taxes kind of messy, make everything more messy, but let's enter something like this. So this might look something like this. So this usually happens for a higher income individual, of course. So now we're gonna say box one says 140,000, right? That's what box one said. And then box two is 35,000. So I'll say, okay, 35, 35,000. And then box three uh, is social security, which it capped, it capped for us once again at uh, 140,000. It should be 140,000, is that? But that's not right because because this box is, is low due to the fact that we put money into the, well, I'm gonna say that's a retirement plan. So I'm gonna say, all right, so 140, so I have to actually manually input now 147,000. It couldn't guess the right number, it tried to guess, but it's not right because of because of that difference. Now that I've input that, it calculates the social security properly because it's 6.2% of whatever the social security wages are. And then on the Medicare, we're at 150,000. So again, it can't really guess that number. It's taking the larger of the two, but it's really 150,000. And so now once I input that, it can calculate the Medicare because the Medicare is, uh, is just a flat rate based on those and so then we got in 12 box 12 i you'll often see these little letters and you can look at the at the instructions for the w-2 and that'll be i believe uh by a 401k plan so if i go into like box 12 i'm gonna say d the there's the ten thousand, and that's kind of an informational thing saying this is why there's a difference between box one the wages for the federal income tax and the wages for the Medicare because there's that $10,000 difference. Why is uh, the Social Security different? The Social Security uh, is different because it got capped at the 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 147,000 and possibly the reduction of the 10,000 from the federal income tax we're saying isn't isn't a reduction for Social Security. So it got capped at the 147 because it would have been 150 then if it's not going to be decreased by that 10,000 like the federal income tax. Uh, but then it got capped at the cap of, for Social Security 147. There is no cap for Medicare. So it's at the 150. So you can see how this gets a little bit messy. But most of the time, the W-2 is populated properly. So we don't have any really issue over here. We're just really kind of calculating the federal income tax type uh, type side of stuff. Okay, so I won't I won't put that back on over into the other form right now. I'll just run a different scenario just so we can see an example of where a problem could happen. Notice that I hit the cap here at the 140, the 147 with this one W-2 income. But what if they worked at two separate jobs? Then you're going to have a situation where 
they could go over the social security cap. So let's say we had this W-2 and then this W-2 for the same person, right? Then they're gonna have overpaid uh, the, on the social security wages if I combine them together. So for example, I'm gonna go back on over, say I have a single individual, a second W-2, W-2-2, and then this one was 40, thousand and we're going to say that we withheld let's say uh four thousand we said so four thousand withheld now the issue is the total of the two social securities are over the cap for an individual which should be one forty seven thousand uh at, at the cap so that means we overpaid the tax on the social security by this forty thousand times the 6.2 or the 2480 so if i go back on over then and I try to look at this, I'm gonna say, okay, the first page looks like normal. And then, but then if I go to the second page, I'm gonna say, okay, the tax was calculated. Okay, boom. But then I've got this item down here, amount from schedule three, line 15. Schedule three is now populated, line 15. So I'm gonna say, all right, line 15 is gonna be boom. That's gonna be add lines, da, 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 line 15 from right here, from line 11, excess social security. So if you see W-2s that have large dollar amounts in them, and then you see multiple W-2s for one individual, it's likely that they paid more into the social security than they should have because they paid over the cap. So that's not gonna happen all the time. It's only gonna happen when you have high income people that are basically working as employees and they have multiple places that they're working for that you might see that happen. Notice the software can help to catch that kind of thing from happening, which is which is great, but we would like to be able to intuitively see when that would happen and you get an intuitive sense, well, there's, the people are making a lot of money. I expect something like that to happen because there's two W-2s and they're high income earners, so they might go over the social security uh, limit. And then when the software does do it, you want to be able to double check it and say, ah, you shouldn't just be like, well, the software does whatever the thing does. You know, you like this. Well, why did that happen? So that we can know what happened. And also we should be able to explain that line item that uh, to a client. So we might dive more into that when we get into social security uh, in a future presentation. Now, obviously you could, if, if, uh, if you are a single individual, you might have multiple W-2 wages and it gets messy as well when you got different kinds of income, W-2 income, dividend income, uh, interest income, Schedule C income, Schedule E income and stuff. So we'll get into more complex tax returns later, but you know, those can complicate things in different, in different areas, such as the social security, for example, because if you had self-employment income, uh, which is a Schedule C, then you also are paying social security on self-employment. And if you also have W-2 income, you run into that similar kind of situation. Now, if you have a married couple, it's quite likely that you have, uh, that you have W-2s from the two married couple. So in that situation, it becomes relevant. We have to actually assign out oftentimes which spouse the W-2s are going towards because now you have two different people, although married, that are paying into do two different social security funds. That's one reason we still have to kind of track their income uh, separately so that the proper amounts are being allocated to the social security. And if one person paid over on the social security, we can see that. So let's see an example. Let's put them in a married couple. Okay, so now I have married filing joint. So we've got Mr. Anderson and Jane Anderson. Why do I have a checkbox up here? And then I'm gonna go down. And so now yeah, I've got that same 180,000, the same scenario with those two W-2s. And, but now the, the standard deduction is 25,900. So instead of the 12,950, and then on page two, tax is calculated. I've got the, the, the federal income tax withheld. But the point I want to make here is that this 2,480 is still there. Why? Because even though married, I assumed both those W-2s, I indicated on the software that they were for one spouse instead of two spouses. Now, if those two W-2s were for two spouses, then I wouldn't have an issue with that overpayment, right? So now I'm gonna say, okay, this these two W-2s were for the same spouse. What if this second W-2 was for another spouse? You're the spouse. 